put a stop loss at $12. Two minutes later, two minutes later, you guys watch it happen live. Two minutes later, what happened? Two minutes later, it dropped 11%. But I got stopped out right the f*** here. And because of that, I saved all that capital I made. Wow, that was good fucking timing. <laughs> oh, I love a stop loss. Oh, I love a good stop. I literally put the stop loss in one minute before. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Oh, that's fucking that. You don't get better timing than that. If I didn't put that stop loss in literally two minutes ago, I'd be getting fucking wrecked right now. Holy shit. Holy shit. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, ladies and gentlemen, that is a perfect example of why I tell you guys stop losses are so goddamn important. This is, for some people, this is the secret to success when it comes to trading stocks. Like a lot of people in here, how many of you guys look back and say, on your trading day or week or your month or your year and say, I would have been so much, more, so much more successful if I just wouldn't have been greedy. Like I was up 30% and I ended up selling down negative 10%. God damn it, at 10 a.m. I took a play and I was up 10% and I finished the day down 5%. Greed is always the killer. And greed is an emotion. So if you trade with emotions, you will lose. You have to take emotions out of trading. That's why the most successful trading in the world is done by computers, because there's no emotions yet. So that's why stop losses or sells on the upside, depending on what you're doing, are the most important thing you can do. Okay? And if you're in a broker that doesn't allow you to put a sell and a stop loss at the same time, you can put... Uh, just a stop loss or a trailing stop loss. Trailing stop losses allow you to get the maximum amount of gain and regular stop losses allow you to just walk away. So let's break down what a stop loss is, the type of stop losses and what I just did and how I fucking made money, okay? BBIG is the play I took today. Absolute degen. This is absolute degen meme stock. Knowing that, I know the risks involved and that eventually this is gonna dump. It's just the case. It's not going to hold forever. Someone who's made a lot of money is going to dump that position. That's going to cause a chain reaction. And it's going to cause others to panic sell so they get out of their profits. Or stop losses to hit. Sometimes stop losses hit across the board and it drops the stock even more. So what did I do? I got in this morning at 10.50. Pre-market. I saw the volume building up and I said to myself, well, if, the, if, they, if they get another run like they did yesterday and the volume's already building up pre-market, this thing could pop. So it ended up going and it flatlined around $11. I didn't have a stop loss at the time because I wasn't that profitable and it wasn't at a point where we saw that massive volume build to where we'd see a big drop, right? Now, we were watching it. And it started going up and we started seeing it parabolically go up, right? Started parabolically moving up, volume started picking up. And I told you guys in that moment, I'm putting a stop loss in here. I'm putting a stop loss in right here. I'm locking in my gains. I am not going to allow myself to lose more money. So what did I do? It was at 12.11. I put a stop loss for $12. That means no matter what happens, if this stock falls to $12 or below, I'm going to get kicked out. And I'm going to lock in that $1.50 per share. And I bought 500 shares. I didn't go crazy this morning. So that means I'm locking in $750 in gains no matter what. That's because I put what's called a stop limit. So my stop loss was what was called a stop limit. A stop limit. This is just two words that mean a stop loss at a specific price. So I told the, my broker, Okay, I told my, or yeah, limit break for some other people's, um, um, uh, you know, brokerage, depending on what it is. I told my broker, hey, we're above $12 right now. If this falls down to $12 at any point, I want you to sell at $12. This thing could go up to $13. If I come back and it's at $13, I can raise my stop limit to $12.50. 
or I could just walk away. That's a stop limit. You're telling the computer, you're telling your broker, sell my shit at this price if it falls there. Even if it falls down to $10. Depending on your broker and what their order flow is like, it should automatically sell. Sometimes it might be one or two pennies different, but that's usually the way it is. Now, if you're going to be gone for a long period of time and you're in something that is, you know, less volatile, because the more volatile it is, the less you want to do a, a trailing stop loss. Because the more volatile something is, you want to be careful of it. You want to, you want to, I like to do uh, limit, stop limits because I don't want uh, it to, to, to drop and then go back up and me get kicked out right there, right? Because that's, I, I want to, I want a defined price for it to sell out at. Now, something that's less volatile, you have what's called a trailing stop loss. So basically, sell my shit if it falls a certain percent down at any point. Stocky, I, I, I don't get what you mean. Tell me what you mean. Okay, here. Your stock is doing this, right? You're at $11, it's at 1150. Now it's at 12. And you're saying to yourself, you know, I don't want to babysit this. I don't want my emotions to get into it. And I think it's going to keep going up. But I want to protect myself on the downside. But if it does move up parabolically, I don't want to I don't want to miss out on those gains because what happens if I put a $12 stop limit, it runs up to $13 and then drops down. Granted, I still get kicked out and lock in at $12, but I miss all this sweet, sweet money. So how do you lock in those gains? By doing a trailing stop loss based on a percent. So what you're doing is you're telling the computer, hey, let this bitch run. But if it drops 5% at any point, I want you to sell it. So instead of allowing it to come all the way back down, you're basically have a little line at 5% following you. And then if this happens, it kicks you out here instead of down here. So you're telling it, follow that bad boy up. But if at any point it drops 5% from, from the high that it got to, I want you to sell it. So that's called a trailing stop loss. Some of your brokerages will say percent stop loss, whatever. Okay. Those are two of the most important things. This allows you to get, number one, get your emotions out of it. And two, your anxiety goes away because you don't have to sit in front of your fucking computer and be like, oh God, do I sell? Do I buy? Do I sell? Do I buy? <laughs> nah, fuck that. Let that shit run. Walk away. Let it run. Now you might be asking yourself, Stocky, if that's the case, why would you ever put a stop limit? Sounds like you should always have a trailing stop loss. Not for very volatile stuff. And the reason I will say that is because look at BBIG, for example. Let's say $10, 1050, or sorry, $11, $12. It's a volatile stock. Some candles can move 5%, right? Because there's so much volume and so much volatility going on. And if I have a trailing st stop loss and it gets to 1225 and then drops to 12, or sorry, goes to 1225 or 1250 and then drops to 1225, it's going to kick me out right there. And then it goes to $14. I miss all that gain. But because it's so close to where I, I want it, I'll put a stop limit here. And that way, if it drops to 1225, I'm not concerned about it. And then it can moon. I can come back. And if it's mooned, I can sell it or I could up my stop limit. I could do whatever I want. But if it's volatile and it does one of these, you could get knocked out of the play. And that's the concern. So the, the more volatile something is, the, and depending on how much I'm up, the more likely I may be a, a stop limit that I may raise over time because I don't want to get kicked out on one of those crazy candles. But generally speaking, stop is, is, is where it's at. The difference between a stop limit, a stop market, the same as a purchase. So um, stop market would be best price available. Uh, and if it's a, if it's a, if it's a low volume, uh, slow traded stock, you're, you could get screwed on a, on a market. But on something like Apple, 
or something like uh, Nvidia or something like that, uh, you could definitely um, you could definitely uh, 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 you know work on a stop market if you want. I like stop limit because I like to tell it exactly where I want it out at. That is what it is, and that's how you use a stop loss. A stop loss has saved me more fucking times than I could ever believe. I'm gonna show you right now why. BBIG, big run, got in at 10.50, saw it at 12.11, put a stop loss at $12. Two minutes later, two minutes later, you guys watch it happen live, two minutes later, what happened? Stock was right here. Two minutes later, it dropped 11%. And guess what? Did I get every penny of gains? No, but I got stopped out right the fuck here. And because of that, I saved all that capital I made, all right? Now, there's more intricacies to this and there's more things that go, Hut's about to go to 11. There's more involved in this. I'm just giving you guys a very basic overview for those of you guys who are uh, who are new to this or who are, uh, who are seeing this on YouTube for the first time. Hi, YouTube. Uh, be good in chat. I'm so, I, every time I go onto our YouTube video, I see our, you guys as chat and you guys, you guys are fucking hilarious, but you ruin it. Like some people even comment, this video was great, but I couldn't stop laughing at chat. So that is a stop loss. That is how a stop loss works and it, why it is one of the few tools that people take way too long to learn to use and miss out on so much. Let the computer do the work for you. Get your fucking emotions out of it. Okay, think of the stock market as hookups and friends with benefits. They're fucking perfect until someone gets their fucking feelings. When someone catches feelings and emotions get involved, it's ruined. Think of it the same way. So I'm really happy that the stop loss, that I put that stop loss in and the stock tanked and I got kicked out and you guys got to watch in real time because you always hear me talk about stop losses, how important those things are. Now, the last thing I'm gonna say is, if you get kicked out by a stop loss, turn off the chart. Because only one of two things are gonna happen. Either A, it's gonna keep falling and you're just basically, you know, cupping your own balls and, 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 and saying, oh, look how fucking good I am, oh, you know? Or, it kicks you out and it fucking moons and now you're going to get FOMO and what's going to happen is the next time you're not going to set a stop loss because you're going to remember this happening and then the stock's going to do this and you're going to lose everything. Let the computer do the work for you. Remember one thing. Remember one thing and this is what I'll tell you. Everybody says, Stocky, how do you get over FOMO? Stocky, how do you get over FOMO? I sold this and it mooned. I didn't do this and it's happened. I, 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 everybody else is making money and, I, and I'm FOMOing. Stocky, every time you sell the thing moons, how do you not get FOMO? There is always another play. Okay? Do you want to know a great example of this? About seven months ago, eight months ago, this was January. This was before GameStop, or maybe it was December. I don't remember. I made a play on, um, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, GE. And I took GE monthlies. And I was playing this and I was up 5% on shares and I got stop lost out and it ran uh, another, I think, 13% in two days. Now we're talking about $40,000 worth of shares. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money I missed out on. But you know what I did? I went and found something else I wanted to play that was on my watch list. And I took calls on American Airlines. And I put far less money into it. And you know what happened? American Airlines announced purchases, debt reconsolidation, everything else. The stock went 22% the next day, and I made a 1,000% return the next day. I turned $1,100 into $11,000 the next day. Now, that's not always going to happen, but I'm just saying... There's always another play out there. The moment you're chasing into something, guess what? Your emotions are evolved. And what do we learn about emotions? You need to be dead inside to do this. Talking to you. You know who you are.